Okay, hi. Um, today I want to talk about my studies towards trying to elucidate a chemical origin uh, for the canonical nucleotides. And I was going to talk about both RNA and DNA, but time constraints meant that I've limited this just to RNA. So I'm going to start by highlighting our published pyrimidine synthesis and then moving on to more current work to my current projects, one which is a pH-controlled multi-component reaction and the other which is a cyanobionyl thiolate displacement towards nucleotide syntheses. And then I want to just finish with the potential for regiospecific oligomerization of RNAs in a chemical system. So what about primidines? Well, we've shown that you can take glycolaldehyde and condense this with cyanamide. This gives two amino oxazole. Two amino oxazole can be sublimed and uh, condensed and reacted with glyceraldehyde. This gives ribose and arabinos, pentose amino oxazolines in high yield. Both of these are one stereochemical inversion from the beta ribose stereochemistry. Both are generated with complete furanocyl selectivity. The pH controlled cyanovinylation of these compounds results in the generation of anhydronucleotides. These are activated to inversion at C2 prime. Phosphoryl transfer, mediated by a reagent delivered in the first chemical step, results in rearrangement of the molecule to give beta cytidine 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphate. This nucleotide has unprecedented photochemical stability for a cytidine nucleotide, and an 80 hour radiation results in a one to one mixture of beta cytidine and beta uridine 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphates. An equivalent radiation of 15 to 20 hours would photochemically destroy any other pyrimidine nucleotide coming through this route, including alpha cytidine 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphate. This allows us not only to propose a robust aqueous synthesis in five steps of two of the four canonical nucleotides, but their photochemical purification, their sanitization from other Watson Crick base pairing structures. So what of the purines? Well, it's been known since the 1960s that hydrogen cyanide oligomerization results in diaminomaleonitrile. Diaminomaleonitrile can then be isomerized photochemically or thermally to give AICN. This, under the conditions of its formation, hydrolyzes to give AICA. Both of these steps, the, the tetramization and the hydrolysis, can be catalyzed by the presence of aldehydes. And though these amino imidazoles uh, can be converted in low yield to the purine nucleobases, I wanted to address the question, can these intermediates and this system be used to regiospecifically gly glycosylate a purine precursor? And the answer is yes. So as a multi-component reaction system, if we take two amino oxazole, glyceraldehyde, and the amino imidazole, pH 7 and above, we observe specific bimolecular reaction to generate the pyrimidine precursors. At low pH, where aminium reactivity dominates the system, we observe specific multi-component reaction where we generate a 5-carbon sugar, which is regiospecifically tethered to the amino imidazole at 3 prime. This delivers the N1 nitrogen specifically to the glycosidic position. Furthermore, if we run this reaction at a pH where the cyanovinylation of the amino oxazolines is controlled, pH 6.5, we observe both pyrimidine and pyrimidine precursors and the tethering of the purine precursor. Also, in the multi-component reaction, the three prime position is inverted with respect to beta ribose stereochemistry. And this is important because it allows us to propose a route moving forward with direct parity to the pyrimidine synthesis, whereby we can propose phosphorylation of two prime intramolecular rearrangement to deliver a purine 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphate. However, I want to leave this chemistry, this is ongoing work, I want to talk about another project which gives you a different flavor for similar chemistry which can also potentially deliver uh, 2 prime 3 prime cyclic phosphates of nucleotides. So if we take thiocyanic acid and condense this acidic pH with glycolaldehyde, we observe high yields of 2 thiooxazole. 2-thiooxazole can also be contents with glyceraldehyde. This results in high yields, once again, of arabino and ribo, this time pentose oxazole thions. These are again generated in the ribo, arabino, and xylo stereochemistries with complete furanocyl selectivity. 
The pentose oxazole thions can then be quantitatively and chemoselectively cyanovinylated on sulfur. This delivers a good leaving group and activation of the C2 position, the position where we want to build uh, nuclear bases on the ribose scaffold. An incoming nucleophile can displace cyanovinyl phylate. Cyanovinyl phylate can then be trapped by excess cyanoacetylene. This delivers the dicyanovinyl thioether, shown as a crystal structure. If the incoming nucleophile is ammonia, we can again deliver the pentose aminoxazolines, which uh, can, can feed into the pyrimidine synthesis. However, we can go a step further. We can. Can we? No, I can't. There we go. We can introduce an ambident nucleophile, such as here shown, anthracilic acid, where the nitrogen can displace the thiovinyl cyanolate. And um, then once generated, the N1 nitrogen of the amino oxazoline can trap the electrophilic ortho um, carboxylic acid to generate the tetracyclic quinazoline dion structures shown. And these can be further modified. But finally, just, just before I leave this chemistry, I want to suggest how this can translate potentially to a purine synthesis. If we can introduce a nucleophile, a nitrogen nucleophile deriving from hydrogen cyanide oligomerization, then we can potentially make, with again direct parity to the pyrimidine synthesis, 2 prime, 3 prime cyclic phosphates of the eight oxo purines. And these can potentially be converted to the purines themselves. But I'd like to leave, just to, for the end of my talk, the uh, synthesis of the monomeric units and think about whether we can use these monomers to deliver regiospecifically a 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester backbone that is observed in RNA. So 2 prime, 3 prime cyclic phosphates hydrolyze in water to give a mixture of 2 and 3 phosphates. These can be reactivated with electrophilic reagents such as cyanoacetylene. However, the monomer by monomer oligomerization of 2 prime, 3 prime cyclic phosphates results in both 2 prime and 3 prime phosphodiester linkages. Furthermore, the template directed synthesis uh, or the template directed ligation of a 2 prime, 3 prime cyclic phosphate and a 5 phosphate on an RNA template results in the specific formation of a 2 prime, 5 prime phosphate, the wrong isomer. Can we get around these problems? Well, I think the answer is yes. If we take a mixture of 2 prime and 3 prime phosphates and treat them not only with cyanoacetylene, but treat them with a thioacid, then we observe chemospecific isolation of the 2 prime hydroxyl of the 3 prime phosphate. How does this happen? Well, the thioacid is the most nucleophilic species in the system. It's cyanovinylated. This generates a activated cyanovinyl thioester. This can isolate the phosphates. Then the mixed anhydride of the 2-phosphate hydrolyzes. The mixed anhydride of the 3-phosphate transfers the acyl group to the 2-prime hydroxyl. And this gives us new monomers to access and to assess the template-directed synthesis and the monomer-by-monomer -monomer oligomerization of RNA. But not only this, in this chemistry, we are in a purely chemical system isolating RNA molecules. If we can move from simple acyl species to amino acyl species, we can start to address from a purely chemical perspective not only RNA replication, but the potential within this chemical system to deliver translation as well as replication. Um, yeah. There we go. And I'd like to finish just by thanking all the people who've been involved, particularly John Sutherland, who I worked with in Manchester, and the whole group there, Jack Shostak at Harvard, current supervisor, and all our collaborators and all the institutions who have supported and funded this work. I'd like to thank you guys for listening. Um, cheers. Cheers.